Good evening, friends. Welcome to the second edition of the India Power Talk. Briefly stated, we are on the 60th day of an unprecedented global lockdown due to coronavirus. As I mentioned in my first talk, while the race to find medical solution at some stage may come to an end, but our race to find economic solution may continue for some time. Today, we may not have any authentic data to assess the direct and indirect damage to the global economy. But certainly, I guess the damage is going to be huge. And I think it is important for us to put our heads down to find solutions, strategies, and gain some insights from experienced leaders like the distinguished guests that we have today. India Power Talk in association with Indian Chamber of Commerce, the oldest chamber in India, is an effort to seek guidance and constructive suggestions from the international leaders on what could be done to revive Indian economy. We would be inviting entrepreneurs, economists, professors, investment bankers, scientists, lawyers, chartered accountants, and other professionals having similar experience from diverse sector who could contribute on the subject. Without wasting time, let me introduce you to, our, to the audience, our today's guest, Mr. Franz Kolb. His career began as a director for international service at Ernst & Young, working with large international companies and organizations, advising them on international business strategies and implementation. As mentioned, currently he is a director, international trade and diplomacy at the Governor's Office of Economic Development in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, whilst discussing with you uh, last week and also yesterday, two things, two things came very prominently. One is the economic development and your passion for education. Could you begin and share your experiences in India? And then could you also tell us the economic success story of Utah and how it could, it, it could relate to India? Thank you very much for this very kind introduction. I am delighted to uh, be at India Power Talk. Uh, I think uh, credit needs to go to one of my friend and mentor, Dr. Ashok Choshi, who um, my very first uh, task, when the very first time went to India, um, find out the, how important India is to the economy of Utah, what the opportunities are. And so uh, the state of Utah, capital is Salt Lake City, from 1847 to today, and over the years, what has been considered the number one economy in the United States was through collaboration, was through working together. And I will be pointing out some of those things that make that made our what we would call desert bloom. Yeah. Our when it came to India uh, in 2010, 2000, and, and, and later, we found um, a a young population that is willing to learn. We found people that had a great work ethic that uh, needed an infrastructure to bring the best out of them. To me, it was not a surprise because we have this great diaspora of India here in Utah. Sir, I need to tell you honestly, no, I'm originally from Austria, from Salzburg, Austria, but no country in my life has changed me more than uh, India. And I say this very sincerely. I was talking to one of my friends today from Denver. Uh, he told me that uh, Colorado and state of Utah, Salt Lake City are all mountain cities, uh, mountain states. And these mountain states, the investment from these mountain states in India is huge, which is, which is not really talked about. Yes, we have. What we have done over the years is we, uh, we meaning Utah specifically, and also some of the intermountain states, we have uh, reached, we have internationalized our economy. I see. We in, we in Utah are uh, maybe one of the leaders. And the reason is we have, um, we have made a commitment that one of the ways to internationalize the economy, we'll maybe talk about that a little bit later, is to educate the people. So one of the tools of the 21st century is to, t uh, to teach the next generation languages, I see. language the languages of the world. So we are speaking in Utah, of 133 languages doing the daily activities of business. 
we have, for example, and we, we have immersion programs where we uh, teach from kindergarten to uh, school. We have, for example, 16,000 people that are learning Mandarin Chinese. Start. So that is one thing. When it comes to investment to India, I could just uh, uh, maybe mention one company that comes to mind, uh, a company called OC Tanner, which is a hundred year old company in Utah. Uh, uh, they are a leader in emplo employee recognition. That, that's really great insight. And, and that's very encouraging, I must say. I mean, can you uh, comment upon the large potential that Indian market has and what you would, uh, what would be your serious advice to the global corporations, considering the the huge Indian market? Yes. So what I will do is I will tell you a little bit about what we have done here, and then I'm going to talk about India. Uh, we have had one of the most thriving economies in the United States pre-COVID. We realized when this came that this will have a significant economic impact, not only on the state of Utah, not only on the United States, but globally. It is unprecedented. What we did is we were one of uh, the only states that put a plan together. It was a collaboration with business, with um, healthcare, with everyone. And we made sure that uh, we could we minimize this impact. I see. We came up with we came up with four kind of uh, phases, and uh, you know there was a red phase, there's a uh, an orange, yellow, and green phase, and uh, be happy to share this uh, our experience. We are now in Utah, in the um, in the yellow phase. I see. So so we have been opening up a little bit, and you also had a. a um, some 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 lockdowns and so on and so forth and it is really a ch it's a challenge for the governments to determine what's you know sh shutting down the economy versus health of the people uh what is there a balance how can we make sure that our economies uh will survive covid 19. yeah what's important is there are company countries that are very export focused such as india and so that will have an impact uh, on India. And, uh, but the key, the key is in the specialization and the, to determine what are the competitive excellence position, what, are, what is India good at, and then they will uh, continue to uh, be able to export to the United, uh, to various countries, including the United States. I would still want to know from you as to uh, how would uh, international companies look at, uh, or I'm sure they will look at uh, India as also a big market. So, uh, you know, from considering from that perspective, do you really see uh, corporations uh, making investments in India? India is an absolutely important market. Uh, it is a subcontinent of the 21st century. Yes. India has, has, has a young population that is willing and wants to learn. There are certain things that we may talk a little bit later from an educational perspective, but uh, 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 we cannot in the 21st century ignore India. Uh, we are considering uh, down the road another trade mission. You know, now we cannot travel anywhere, but we, uh, we, we are considering a virtual trade mission also. I see. With India through our, through our World Trade Center, we, we're working with them. And they are also working together with the World Trade Center Mumbai. The, whilst we have large corporations, uh, but, but we also have a very large population of medium sized and small and medium sized enterprises. Uh, and they have a huge potential. But, uh, and we have, in fact, around 4 million of small and medium enterprises. They are hungry of capital, they are hungry of technology, they want to collaborate, they want international brands to work with. What would your advice be to them? So here's what's interesting. In Utah, we have 92% of small and medium-sized companies. So we consist, it, the, the small and medium-sized companies are the backbone of Utah. We set everyone around the table and we said, government is not creating jobs. It is businesses that create yes. jobs. 
it's the business that takes risks, the entrepreneur takes risks, and so there should be a reward. That's what our governor always says. The thing was taxation was also very important. Don't tax us to death. Now, I need to tell you here that the state of Utah has a, ta has a um, tax rate of 5%. And out of those 5%, 41% goes into education. That's the way we fund our education. What needs to happen is there needs to be an environment that, that uh, rewards entrepreneurs and risk takers. We, have, we developed small business development centers. We develop through the small business. We have seminars. We, uh, we have a governor's office of economic development that I work in that, that uh, helps companies, for example, to get government contracts. And all the no, that's really interesting. But I must also say here that look in India, the regulations with regard to small and medium sized companies are, are, are very, very conducive and favorable. Uh, the ranking of ease of doing business has improved tremendously in the last uh, four or five years. We have improved it consciously, taken steps to improve it. Regulations with regard to incorporation of company or starting of business are, are fairly today very simple and, and very, uh, very, very investor friendly. What would you advise to the uh, the SME medium segment and small companies in in US and also in India. Would you what would your advice be to them? Would you would you be recommend them to collaborate in some form or the other and and grow each other's business? What would you advise them? I, the key is to have uh, the ability to put a business plan together. I think a business plan that consists of uh, uh, a vision, uh, 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 goals, objectives strategies and implementation and it's a roadmap for the success of a business and this could be very simple it doesn't have to be but should be reviewed periodically and i know an entrepreneur many times only goes with a, with a gut feel which i think is okay but let's move to uh, the from economy to education uh, indian government has uh, is very keen that foreign universities commence their online programs or even have their campuses. Do you think that global universities should look at India um, as their um, as a place for campuses? I think when it comes to education, India is ripe for foreign universities. My goodness, it is absolutely in incredibly important. And I have never in my life seen more dedicated students than I've seen in these schools. And I'm telling, in fact, I was so impressed that I had the opportunity to adopt uh, uh, one girl and I uh, helped her with her education uh, a little bit. Her name was Trupti Shinde, never forget. The reason I'm telling you this is that in order for India to prosper in the 21st century, education is absolutely important. There will be international education uh, uh, company, uh, organizations coming in. That's fine. There will be, uh, and there already are, as we all know. Uh, uh, yes, universities should come over. They should collaborate with existing universities. But, joint programs, but, joint programs between the universities are currently also allowed. They allow the joint programs. Uh, they allow joint degrees, but uh, uh, but in, in the still in a very slightly compressed manner. So what it comes down to is the desire for education is in India, yes. three exclamation marks. So if that's the case, so the demand is there. Yes. And since the demand is there, universities from uh, everywhere uh, should come over there and should, and I think it would be a very, very fertile ground. Uh, uh, anything, anything specific you would like to add about the skill, skill-based education or vocational education? What would you, what would you say? Yes, I think that is very important because everybody always talks about a university, a university, a university. We have this issue here in Utah as well. In fact, we have that in America. But it, it's these skills that I believe are important, that are transferable, that uh, extreme. So, so. There are some people that just don't want to go to universities, don't maybe have the yes. aptitude to go to the university. Yes, you are absolutely right. It's these things, that, this, this, this skill-based education that I believe 
uh, incredibly important in India that will help in rural communities, every people that just don't have access to university. And, and I think that should be formalized into in fact, no, in fact, I must tell you that, look, there, are, there is a large number of students who are school dropouts you know, because of uh, financial constraints or otherwise, uh, you know, the, there are in, in urban, in rural areas, there are not too many higher educational schools. So in India, there's a huge opportunity for, uh, you know, in global institutions uh, in technical skills or vocational training uh, for them to come to India. And, and 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 cater to this this large population of the of students i think i think uh, that is uh, you, fairly easy these are fairly easily transferable programs what would your you know a couple of strategic takeaways would be for the for the foreign companies uh, who are looking at india uh, to set up their manufacturing base or the inputs for the educational institutions globally so uh, as far as companies uh, going to India, I think one of the first thing is that um, don't go there for the short term, go there for the long term. I think it's important that India, when it comes to the 21st century, will be a leader and uh, it will be, uh, um, uh, my other advice would be get a mentor in India. Which companies, uh, a lot of people don't understand that there is some serious purchasing power when it comes to, to a certain segment of the population in India. It is just phenomenal what these opportunities are. And, uh, I think uh, educational institutions, uh, the time is now to go over to uh, India and start out with uh, maybe a small, maybe with some small collaborations and then uh, later on they, they will expand. But I, you know, the times are tough. Let's be honest, times are tough now, but doing tough times is when you really know who your friends are. That This has been a fantastic evening to hear uh, Franz uh, call, call. Uh, I must sincerely thank him for having taken time for sharing his valuable insights and experience. I would like also thank the Indian Chamber of Commerce for extending their support in organizing this in the following uh, Friday. Uh, till then, Let's stay happy and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you once again you. for joining us. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.